Hi folks, I want to talk a little bit about this Lemon versus Kurtzman case, partly because this kind of sets a basic framework in place for a big discussion over some time on this whole issue of freedom of religion and the unfortunate intertwining uh, with public schools. I think that <clears throat> Back in ancient history, you know, back at the beginning of public schools, I don't. First of all, I don't think public schools were even anticipated by the founding fathers. That's something that came along in the early 19th century, uh, and um, and the main purpose of it, I believe, was to give uh, Americans the opportunity to gain the basic skills that they need to function uh, as a uh, as a citizen. You know, as somebody that's knowledgeable, that can read the newspaper, that can make their own decisions, uh, and function as a better taxpayer, voter, uh, and, uh, and, and, and also, a, there's no question, but that a public school system was envisioned as a way to give Americans the tools that they need in order to be functional in the world stage uh, in all levels, uh, business, government, uh, the military, everything that you need in order to function uh, in modern times. And of course, their modern times in the 19th century were like around the early 1800s. But uh, many of these people that were the founding fathers did have some degree of education. Uh, the self-educated include, of course, Abraham Lincoln, and he is considered to be one of the most, uh, uh, let's say, um, qualified uh, people that have ever served as president. Not everybody likes him, but just about all historians put him, rank him either first or very close to the top as one of the best presidents of all time. Yet he is what we call an autodidact, autodidact, and that would be like A U T O. Uh, die, D-I, DAC, D-A-C-T. Autodidacts are people who are totally uh, or almost totally self-taught. And so uh, Lincoln is a perfect example. And in our times, uh, we don't see this very often today because everybody does have at least some a a a ability to obtain a an education. Now it's interesting that the modern version of an autodidact is often thought to be Malcolm X, who also lived in the 60s and 70s, and was a, you know, he was a uh, vociferous, outspoken uh, person on behalf of the Black Muslim movement, uh, basically Black power, the the Black people, very aggressive. Uh, and yet, on the other hand, uh, in his early life, he had been convicted of uh, robbery. It's almost basically, though, a trumped-up thing. It's no no reason to believe that um, what he did was that serious. Uh, the issue was his father was murdered, his house was burned down as a child, uh, and it was all about racism and this type of thing. And so he did, I think, resort to try to like get even because nobody was doing anything about the murder of his father. Uh, and, and over time, even though he was in prison for this uh, offense that he was involved in, uh, he read everything he could get his hands on in the prison library. And this is a very, very important uh, part of this. Um, it's one of those situations where it was the only option for the poor at, at one point. But more and more what we're hoping is that people you know, can uh, obtain an education because it seems to be so essential in success in your life. Uh, most of your criminals that you'll see in prison, there are statistics out there that most prisoners that are in prison uh, have a hard time reading and writing. Uh, are functionally what we call functionally illiterate. And so some kind of education is critically important and it is uh, a domestic requirement of our government today. And this is at the local, state, and federal level. 
But the problem with public education is that it immediately sets up this issue of what about religion in schools. There's the two big institutions, the government and the churches. And so when those two start to go across like this, it, it, causes, it causes difficulty. Well, in the early days of public education, uh, religion was a very common part uh, of public education. I mean, if you go back, um, there's still schools. I know my school that I went to when I grew up is about as religious as they come. If you went in there, you wouldn't believe that it was a public school. Uh, but by and large, um, the larger cities especially have started trying to eliminate religion from the public school. And the reason for that is that there is a perception that um, it, it's not fair, it's not just to have one religion uh, be allowed to control the um, you know daily operation of the school. Um, I've seen this a number of times even at my old high school when my kids graduated. Uh, they'll bring in a preacher from some local Christian uh, uh, church and he'll pray and he'll give a speech and uh, to me it's just uh, bad in the context that uh, you're just um, asking for it. I mean someone's going to come along and want to have a, a Wiccan, uh, want to you know uh, propose a Wiccan uh, priest or whatever to come in and and perform that uh, graduation or at least have equal time uh, on the platform. I mean, when you do that, when you allow, you know, one, uh, you know, uh, horse out of the barn, then you got to let all the horses out of the barn when it comes to this type thing. So that it's just not going to work uh, the way that it's being done in a lot of places because sooner or later, you know, people are going to get their come up and, and it's not going to be good. Uh, we've got an example of that right now in Oklahoma City where they have the Ten Commandments have had them there for many years uh, on the state house lawn and now there's a group uh, sat satanic people I guess that want to put some kind of a satanic statue across from the Ten Commandments uh, and uh, apparently they've got the money and they're ready to put it in there but I mean it's the age old thing is that um, neither one of them should be there uh, and but that's what you get when you allow one you have to allow all now there is a way around this and that is the more recent cases after Lemon versus Kurtzman develop a plan where it just gives a student a choice and the problem with that is though that the school has to trust the student and so uh, in a way it's a kind of a tacit uh, form of uh, state action if they know exactly what the child's going to say but it's hard to defeat that because the basic uh, thing is going to be that the person had a choice the person chose and it was the person's free choice to use some kind of religious um, you know metaphor or uh, verse or prayer or something like that well, one of the important things that comes out of this Lemon versus Kurtzman and what I really want you to look at is this Lemon test. Uh, and it's uh, been mentioned already by Bradley Paul uh, Parks. Uh, and the Lemon test uh, is a, a way for courts to uh, determine um, what these uh, you know, different parts of the situation are and try to see how that it all fits in. And so uh, it, it has to be uh, something involved that does uh, equal or have some involvement with a secular purpose. Uh, in other words, if you're teaching philosophy and you want to touch on religion uh, as a part of a philosophical uh, point uh, in a philosophy class, then that, that'll probably fly. But if you're teaching uh, creationism as opposed to evolution, that's probably not going to work because it's not a scientific and if you're in a science class then it's got to be something that is scientific uh, and then of course uh, there's an other uh, part to this the second prong is it cannot inhibit 
or advanced religion. It has to be neutral uh, on that. Uh, and uh, so basically, um, you know, it's uh, one of these where that's probably has to be kind of a watered down version where you're, you're not trying to win people over, as it were, to your belief system. And the final prong is, does it excessively entangle uh, the uh, public school or the government with religion? And so look at those three tests. Uh, and uh, so basically there has to be some kind of redeeming secular basis for it. Why would we want to do it? Uh, and then the second part is that um, it cannot uh, advance or inhibit either way, one religion or another. So if you have someone that stands up and says, well, our religion is the only religion, and if you're not a Muslim, or if you're not a Christian, or if you're not this, you're not that, then you're going to go burn in hell. You know, you cannot do that in a public school. It cannot be done, even though you may believe that. Uh, and then, of course, it cannot excessively entangle uh, religion in the school. So if you get in a situation where, for example, before every game, and we had this at my school, before every game, somebody from the uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes would come out and pray. And, of course, my son said, well, that one there has got uh, been having sex with three different guys, but she's out here giving a prayer. So it's, it's kind of a, a joke in a way. Uh, but, um, you know, these are the kind of things that, that come up. So, hey, uh, I hope that was somewhat helpful. I'll be trying to put up a few more of these today, and uh, we'll be sharing more in the future. Uh, have a good one. We'll check back with you a little later. Thanks a lot.